So I wanna show some of the differences between Google Assistant and Josh AI using the new ChatGPT integration. And this is still in beta, so it's early days. It might be a little slow to load at times, but just wanna show where this is going. You know, Google's a huge company, access to lots of data. And on the Josh side, we're really a small startup, but using the ChatGPT integration, we can do some pretty amazing things. I'm also not gonna focus on home automation right now. For those who know Josh AI, we do home automation really well. You can control lights, shades, thermostats, TV music, all that stuff. But I'm just gonna focus more on knowledge graph today. So let's get started with, hey Google, what can you tell me about Saru Hanroll in San Francisco? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey Josh, what can you tell me about Saru Hanroll in San Francisco? Saru Hand Roll in San Francisco is a sushi bar and Japanese restaurant that specializes in hand-rolled sushi. The restaurant has been serving traditional and modern Japanese cuisine for over two decades, and has become a popular destination for sushi lovers. Saru Hand Roll's menu also includes bento boxes, tempura, ramen, and other Japanese dishes. So now let's try something on more the generative AI side. Hey Google? Tell me a short story about unicorns in Paris. I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey Josh, tell me a short story about unicorns in Paris. Once upon a time, there was a magical kingdom in the heart of Paris. This kingdom was ruled by the king and queen of the unicorns. Every day, the king and queen would ride out of the castle on their majestic white unicorns to visit the people of Paris. They would bring joy and laughter to everyone, and the people of Paris loved them for it. One day, the king and queen decided to hold a grand celebration in the kingdom to show their appreciation for the people of Paris. They invited all the citizens of the city and decorated the castle with beautiful flowers and ribbons. The night of the celebration, the king and queen rode around the city on their... So I'm just going to stop that so it doesn't keep going, but you can see we can generate stories like that, which could be good for bedtime stories for kids. Cool, so now let's go for another generative one. Hey Google, make up a new sport and tell me what the rules are. Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. Hey Josh, make up a new sport and tell me what the rules are. The new sport is called Pickle Toss. The aim of the game is to toss a pickle as far as possible. The player must stand in a designated area and toss the pickle with one hand keeping the other hand behind their back. The pickle must land within a designated area, otherwise it is out of bounds. The play continues until all players have had their turn. The player who tosses the furthest is the winner. That's a strange sport, but sounds interesting. All right, now let's get into some other information. Hey Google, what can you tell me about the wine Mouton Rothschild? Sure. Today, Chateau Mouton Rothschild has 222 acres, 90 hectares, of grapevines made up of Cabernet Sauvignon, 81%, Merlot, 15%, Cabernet Franc, 3%, and Petit Verdot, 1%. Their wine is fermented in oak vats, they are one of the last Chateau in the Medoc to use them, and then matured in new oak casks. People hey. also sometimes ask me, what kind of wine is Mouton Rothschild? Do you want to hear the answer? No. And now let's okay. try the other side. Hey Josh, what can you tell me about the wine Mouton Rothschild? Mouton Rothschild is a prestigious French border wine estate owned by the Rothschild family. It is classified as a first growth under the 1855 Bordeaux classification system, and its wines are highly sought after and acclaimed. Mouton Rothschild produces a range of red and white wines from the renowned Poilac appellation in Bordeaux. The estate's flagship wine is the iconic Mouton Rothschild, a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, and Petit Verdot. The estate's other wines include the White Dry White Graves de Mouton and the Sweet White Sauternes is Mouton Cadet. Hey Google, what are some of the most famous LGBT Catholic priests? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey Josh. What are some of the most famous LGBT Catholic priests? There are several notable LGBTQ Catholic priests who have made significant contributions to both the Catholic Church and the LGBTQ community. 
These include Father Michael Judge, an openly gay Franciscan friar and chaplain to the New York City Fire Department, Father James Martin, an editor at large at America Magazine and author of the best selling book Building a Bridge, Sister Janine Gramick, co founder of New Ways Ministry, Bishop John Stowe of the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, and Father Brendan Callahan, a priest in the Diocese of Sacramento, California. Cool, so let's maybe try something more um, math and education related. Hey Google, do you know any tricks to help me square numbers in my head? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey Josh, do you know any tricks to help me square numbers in my head? Yes, there are several tricks that can help you square numbers in your head. The most common one is to break down the number into two parts and then multiply the two parts together. For example, to square the number 15, break it down into 10 and 5 and then multiply 10x5 equals 50. Another trick is to add the number to itself and then multiply the result by the original number. For example, to square the number 15, add 15 plus 15 equals 30 and then multiply 30x15 equals 450. Finally, you can use the nearest 10 technique which involves taking a number and rounding it up or down to the nearest 10 and then multiplying that number by itself. For example, to square 15, round it up to 20 and then multiply 20 x 20 equals 400. Cool. All right. So now let's get some stats. Hey, Google, how many people in the United States are left-handed and between 18 and 36? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey, Josh. How many people in the United States are left-handed and between 18 and 36? According to a recent survey, approximately 11% of the U.S. population between the ages of 18 and 36 are left-handed. This is equivalent to about 18.6 million people. Cool, so just a couple more here. Let's maybe get into some facts. Hey Google, why is California called California? On the website aaregistry.org, they say the name is derived from a knightly romance book that was published in 1510. The story was about an island paradise near the Indies where a beautiful black queen Caliphia ruled. She was the leader of a country of black Amazons with masses of pearls and gold. Cool. I also found an answer to this question. Why is it called a California? Do you want to hear it? No. Cool. So now let's try. Right. Hey, Josh. Why is California called California? California is named after a mythical island described in a Spanish language novel from the 16th century. The novel, L.A.S. Sergus de Esplandian, describes an island in the West Indies inhabited by an Amazon-like race of women warriors. The island was called California, and the name was adopted by Spanish explorer Hernan Cortes for the region he explored in 1542. The name was later extended to the entire western coast of the United States. Cool, so just a couple more here. Hey Google, do you have any tips to help me sleep better at night? Sorry, but to do that, you'll need to ask your Google Workspace administrator for permission. Okay, but to work with personal information like your sleep data, you'll need to link your accounts. Look in Google Assistant settings under wellness, or check out the link I just sent to your phone. So I guess I have to link something for that. It's trying to go personal. Um, let's go on the Josh side. Hey Josh, do you have any tips to help me sleep better at night? Yes, there are several tips to help you get a better night's sleep. Try to maintain a consistent sleep schedule, avoiding sleeping in on weekends or staying up late on weekdays. Avoid caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine close to bedtime. Exercise regularly, but not close to bedtime. Establish a relaxing bedtime routine. Make sure your bedroom is dark, quiet, and not too warm. Avoid screens and other electronic devices close to bedtime. If you can't fall asleep after 20 minutes, get up and do something relaxing until you feel sleepy again. Hey Google, will ChatGPT replace Google? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey Josh? Will ChatGPT replace Google? No. 
ChatGPT is an RE chatbot that uses natural language processing to respond to human queries, but it is not designed to replace Google or any other search engine. However, ChatGPT can be used to supplement existing search engines like Google, and it can provide a more conversational experience when interacting with a computer. Cool. So last question. Hey, Google, is the singularity near? According to Wikipedia, the singularity is near. When Humans Transcend Biology is a 2005 nonfiction book about artificial intelligence and the future of humanity by inventor and futurist Ray Kurzweil. People also sometimes ask me, is the singularity going to happen? Do you want to hear the answer? No. All right. Hey, Josh, is the singularity near? The singularity is a hypothetical event in which artificial intelligence surpasses human intelligence and begins to rapidly evolve and improve itself. There is no clear consensus on when or if this event will occur, but some experts believe that it could be within the next few decades. It is important to note that the singularity is not a foregone conclusion and may never happen.